Hello again. Welcome to Band of Badgers. This is our kind of little chit chat. I completely forgot my cup of tea. I don't know, it's probably gone cold by now. Uh, where we do some uh, mystery unboxings and with me to kind of ask questions and do bits and pieces is Steve and Josh. Josh has joined us because he's been curious. He's been uh, watching trolling from the chat channel for a few sessions, a few boxes, and he had, you know, get involved. So what he's here for. Um, but he wanted to ask, ask, ask some questions and do that kind of thing. Just is, is a nice way of doing it. And he's come up with some, with some good ideas in some of our unboxings already for uh, for Dan at 3 d Let's see if he pays attention. Uh -huh. Right. So moving on to our next box. Um, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, we do three unboxings. And if you're watching up live on Twitch, we do one, two, three. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we chop it all up quite badly, re-edit it and stick it, on, stick it back on YouTube, but you'll see one at a time, just to make it easier, because you might not be interested in all, all three products. So, this is where I try to desperately try and switch to the other camera, which is <gasps> over here. Hello, so we've done this box, we've done this box, now we're getting on to the big meaty box. Have you any ideas of what this could be? Steve, Josh, do you uh, have any ideas? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do have an idea, yep. All right, let's go with Josh. Because I think Steve knows what's inside. Yeah, they do. Sure. <laughs> uh, the logo reminds me of the first Baldur's Gate game. <gasps> oh, he's close. He's close. Any other so that, suggestions? That, that's my that's my only memory of it. Okay. Uh, don't know if that don't know if that helps or not. Um, Steve, any ideas? Are you? Uh, it it you... is the Bal Baldur's Gate special edition, it isn't it? It is the Baldur's Gate <laughs> special edition. So let's move. There we go. Um, but that was, a, that was a good one, Josh. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'll give them it to you. <laughs> so this, um, it's big. Look at this. This is the uh, Boulders Gate One and Two. Uh -huh. mm. Um, <laughs> special edition. So for those of you who don't know, Boulders Gate was a massive game for for us, for me, back in the day. Um, and recently they remastered it and stuck it on console and PC. You can buy, get it on Steam. And this was the like a hundred pound box set, um, the collector's edition. This isn't even the biggest one. They had a bigger one with a skull head, and, like a stress ball skull, and all kinds of different add-ons. This one I I like the look of because I wasn't interested in a stress ball. Little did I know we were going to be in lockdown, so it might have come in handy. Um, but this one comes with a few extra bits and pieces. Um, let me switch camera for you. And now vroom, you will kind of see, I'll get my scissors out of the way, kind of see what's inside. We might have to go higher and bigger and taller. There we go. Speaking that, of Switch, whoop. they did actually release it on the Switch as well, which uh, oh, did makes it? it even more accessible. Yeah. So, so here we go. So this is the, um, the remastered game. Now, this originally was a uh, PC game, so it's a point and click. Um, but with Baldur's Gate 3 coming out very, very soon, um, it was a nice way to kind of get a remastered edition out. Um, and it's, this is the console version. There's nothing on the back. It's just a nice big box. And then I thought that I could use this as my DM box. However, I, got, I was a little... So the pictures, whenever you see pictures on game of their special editions, they're always really, really nice. And you think 100 quid is going to be good. And unfortunately, I was a little bit let down by this one. Because it's it's magnetic tab, which is nice. I thought that was good. But you can see it's already bowing. It doesn't, there's no weight and strength in this box at all. And I thought that was a bit of a letdown. I thought for 100 quid, I'd get a decent box. Compared to what I get with um, Dungeons & Dragons, Beetle & Grimm, um, you know, the essential box set. That's a sturdy box set. This, you know, Wizard of the Coast had some say in this, and I'm quite surprised they went this way. But I thought I would use it as a DM box, and I, I can't really. It's it's too weak to use. Now inside, as you can see, I get a scroll tube with some artwork. I get a notebook, which we'll come back to. I get the game, the PS4 edition. I get some metal handouts. I get a metal box, and I get some badges. So, guys, what would you like to see first? What's in the tube? What's in the tube? The tube? Okay. So, the tube 
is um, it shows all the artwork from the various games and the expansions as well. So the game itself includes all the DLC, everything, all the expansions. You get in, if you if you go into the game or the shop or Amazon, wherever you buy it from, um, and just buy the game, you are going to get everything in it. Um, again, after spending a hundred pound on this, I will. I sadly wasn't as impressed as what the pictures looked it to be. But it is a uh, tube. It's a map. So the first thing you get is a Sword Coast map. Now again, I saw this and and I thought that looks amazing. Um, I love player handouts. And this was going to be used for our D and D tables. You can see everything is nicely written on there. It's all one color, which I didn't mind because it reminds me of a proper map. Nice sepia style. Yeah, and it, it even has a little bit of texture, but it is really thin, cheap paper. Um, and again, I think that you know that let it down a little bit. Um, I've only used it a few times and already just re-rolling it. There's a there's a dent here and, and stuff. Uh, it does say, uh, you know, quite, that's how springy this paper is. It does say 2019 uh, Wizards made in China, but it it just feels cheap. Almost needs um, to be laminated, doesn't it? Really, to be honest, or something. Well, laminated would be too shiny as well, and it is quite dark. I mean, I've got two lights, spotlights, uh, here on it, so you can see the detail coming up. But in person, you have to do have to strain, and I've got the glasses on, to read some of these things. And this is not a full map, by the way. The map, if you've ever seen the whole map, continues. Um, I've got a really nice big color map that uh, one of the badgers, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, uh, large scale printed for us, and sadly, yeah, sadly that let me down. Uh, yep. So what the game? Yeah, I have it on the on the console. I have the game itself. Um, I love the the difference. The difference it has done is you don't have to point and click. So you don't have to with the joystick. You don't have to move and click to activate. They've done it so the cameras just uh, the, the the characters the the party just move around with um, whichever direction you're moving your joystick in, and obviously with much bigger screen resolutions, you know, a 50 inch TV, there's a lot more ground to cover, so it it actually works pretty good. There you go is the the back of the cover, but it's just a game, you know, it's a disc, boom boom boom, as we've seen before. There you go. Maybe you should, we should do a let's there. play of that. That would be quite interesting to do a. Uh, a live let's play off of Baldur's Gate. We can do that. We're actually go we're actually planning um to do Baldur's Gate three uh, as a live play. So that's something we're looking into. Um, and I was tempted to do not that it's related to to D and D, but Pathfinder, Pathfinder Kingmaker. Um, uh, again a gorgeous game. Um, but this has been remastered. It is hands down the best. D and D game I've ever played. The story is amazing. There we got a symbol of Baal in there, um, and that's the shadows of arm, which is the drow, um, and it was fantastic. There's also the the, the other expansions are in there as well. There's more D DLC uh, available in this edition. So that's the game, and that's just just the game. But I don't buy the collector editions just for the game. I buy it for for other things. What else do you want to see, guys? What's in the box? What, well, that's it. That's what's in the box. See, that's what the plan is. <laughs> the tin. The tin. The, what's in the, the tin? The, the, tin, the tin box. So here we have uh, the symbol of Baal again, because it's all about the symbol of Baal and the main uh, bad guy. This is a set of metal dice. Oh. So you have these. Um, uh, they, they are a nice set of dice. They are nice. And there is, for the 20, there is the symbol of Baal again just there um and i have a five-year-old and he has tried to play with these but these are super sharp edges that if you ever stepped on that in the middle of the night that would really that would hurt more than lego um, and i've kit. stepped on lego lots of times 
Plus yeah, no, yeah that, that would that would go in. <laughs> um, it's a nice. It, it, I'm not a fan of metal dice. Um, I find them too heavy, and I've got a wormwood uh, dice tray, and it just it just kills my wormwood. Um, but um, they, they're, they're nice. They're very clear, very shiny, very sharp. Nice contrast um, I, with the red text as well. Exactly. Yeah, I will uh, use them at some point. Do they say who made those in terms of like the who actually engineered those ones? Um, no, it just says Wizards Property Made in China. Oh. I wasn't um, sure if they got someone like Dean Dice or something to make those or, you know. No, uh, I, to be fair, Dean D, uh, D Dice do make uh, better. I don't know if they're, I think they are the manufacturers of metal dice. Uh, but the, the metal dice that they do, they do sell, um, I would say, are much higher quality than these. Um, this comes in a nice handy tin. Um, but I think again, we're you know filming this during lockdown now. What I think in twenty nineteen, um, D and D made the jump from seven dice to was it eleven or twelve? Eleven. So you get the two D twenties and all their sets now yeah, come out and with eleven. And I think to release this set, um, why not give us eleven dice? Um, just being picky. You know, but it's a nice tin, especially if you want to play bad guy, if you're playing uh, a bowl game, if you're playing a Vernus game, it's quite nice. You bring that to the table, people, ooh, there's a little discussion point for you. Okay, so what else? What else would you uh, like to be? What's next? What's in the notebook? Notebook. Notebook is empty until you put something in it. So ah. the notebook, there is. Uh, a kind of bevel relief, uh, relief of Baal himself. And in the middle is the... You sh I don't know if you can see that that well. But in the middle is the Baal exactly. symbol. Mm. So the Baal symbol is in the middle there. Um, oh, I've just spiked a red line there. But it is actually... It feels like a fake moleskin. Um, you know, it's it's got some weight. It's got loads of pages. An absolute ton of pages. They are uh, lined, dark lined. You do get the uh, ribbon bookmark, which I quite like. Don't get me wrong, I do like this, and I will be using this uh, for character notes and things. Now, the bit I did like was every now and then there's a page of artwork. Mm. Um, you, the downside is you don't get any squared paper, so you can't make. There's no room for maps. Um, it's just notes. They are very skinny lined notes. The paper is quite thin. Don't use a sharpie, um, but every now and then it's a really nice piece of uh, of artwork. There we go. So something to doodle at the table. You know, you can colour that in if you want to. You can scribble on it. Um, give you uh, ideas for your own kind of uh, magic weapons, maybe. But there you go. So it's it feels good. Um, so there, that is something you can use to keep notes in. Because yeah. Josh, you need to keep notes in a book. <laughs> I'm very bad at keeping notes in any game. Um, there, there you go. Yeah. Just a hundred pound and uh, <laughs> yeah. all, pounds all, that, that, all this could that be book. <laughs> that book. Um, okay, so that's that. What else? Does the uh, ball thing in the middle do anything, or is it is it does it do anything, or is it just simply just a? a so I, I don't think this is a hand cholo. I, no, it's made in China, twenty nineteen wizards again. But I love this. It's very weighty. If you're a fan of uh, handing out artifacts in games and things, you could use this. Um, it's the symbol of ball. There it is. So, ooh, I'm slowing down a little bit there. Symbol of ball. And it doesn't do anything. It just looks good. I love the fact it is raised. It's heavy. And the eyes are just painted red, but they're supposed to be gems and jewels and things. But That's I've already used LED this. based. Oh, yeah. Well, that, would, that would be even better. <laughs> but I've used this in the, again, on our YouTube channel. Check out uh, Band of Badgers. Uh, Descent into Avernus. I think I've also used this in Avernus Rising. 
and I may have even used it on, on the road to Boulder's Gate, I'm not sure. But I love things like this that you can you can just use time and time again. Um, they're really, really nice. Fantastic for players around the table. Not so great when you're we're in lockdown and playing online and we're going, no, look at this. Um the you know, it's 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 nice. It's not worth a hundred quid, but this is the this is I've had the most use out of this uh, artifact, even more than the game. I've I've played with this more than I've played the actual game itself, uh, mainly because I'm playing Kingmaker and I'm playing um, Assassin's Creed <laughs> a lot as well. Do you think when designing the box, they were riding on the nostalgia factor more so than actually the quality of the stuff that's inside it? Uh, yes, very much. I mean, all of this is connected to Baal, but because there isn't a game, if there was a, f a fifth edition D&D game connected to Baldur's Gate, I mean, we had Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. What we didn't get was Baldur's Gate This Story as a mm -hmm. playable campaign. Um, I'm not even sure if this is... A playable campaign from third edition or fourth edition. I think it. There are times when we hinted on it, or it went on in the world. But I don't think this was ever a written campaign. Steve might be able to look that up and. It's more like two point five was now. I heard, but unless that exists or doesn't exist, I heard rumours of it being two point five. Um, it would be two or or three. I think it might even be the crossover. And then that, that brings on to, like, these, I thought these would initially be postcards, uh, but they're not. You know, you get the, you get the artwork postcards in collected editions. There's Minsk and Boo again. Uh, there's Imowin and the Bear. So these are play, uh, characters that you meet in the game of Baldur's Gate, in, in, in this version of the game. But they're not postcards. They're just character cards. Mm. And the artwork is fantastic. The little description is good. But I can't do anything with these. Um, I can pin them on the wall, maybe. Um, uh, you know, and if maybe if you use that as a handout to say, maybe if your characters met Minsk and Boo or Imowin, you could say, and this is what she looks like. Then you could hand it out to, you know, put it around the table. I could show it in front of the camera and go, oh, there's Imowin. But other than that, um. I didn't find them interesting. Um, I would have had more joy if they were postcards. Because I'm in lockdown. I can send postcards to people. And it gives me something to do. And, for, and it is a nice big box. It's just a shame it's so weak. It just it just shakes around. Um, if it only had a sturdy lid, that would have been great. The other things you get are three pins. Now, these are nice. You can probably buy these for under a fiver anyway. Um, but it, this is one of the expansions. The Dragon Spear. And I have uh, I have a D&D bag. I have my Go bag. And I started collecting pins because I go to the various gaming conventions and things. And I thought that was, that was very good. But um, th these will be going on my bag. There's a shadow, shadow of arm, I think. Is that my shadow of arm? Might be. Oh, there's a shadow, shadow of arms. That's a spider queen. Okay, so these are nicely detailed. They're metal. They're quite heavy, and they will go in my bag. Um, and there you go. So there's the the next uh, box set. Any questions? Any more questions on that one? Not necessarily a question, but just a comment that I think, you know, I never actually finished those, either two of those games. I may actually be tempted to get it on console just so I can finish it. But I have it on, I have them both on PC, so I'm torn. I yeah. would probably, if you've got the latest editions, uh, just check your Steam account and see if there's any updates. Because now the remastered edition is out, maybe then you'll get more updates. Yeah, no, I actually bought the remastered and they're in my... Yeah. Um, steam library i just i tried playing them but i just couldn't get around to finish because there is so much story there that it, it, yes. i'm i'm unfortunately a cutscene skipper as well so i uh How yeah. you skip the best bits? <laughs> i know i oh, know i'm terrible but... i think oh, i want I... the party out in belder's gate too there, there was a horrendous um uh, burning hands slash delay bars fireball moment oh dear and it's multiplayer as well on PC. Well, I, I, is it yeah, multiplayer? We used to play the, multiplayer. Yeah, 
so that is oh yeah and that's by uh so there's a it's wizard of the coast it's beam dog and sky uh sky bound i was gonna say sky cloud um but yeah unfortunately um yeah i wouldn't i, I wouldn't buy it again i mean it was a hundred pounds and from all the items that we get in like Steve, Steve knows this. Josh has seen some of the stuff we've done. Um, I think we, we've looked at you know, 3D printed items, miniatures, the stuff we get from Wizard of the Coast, the other items we get from Wizard of the Coast and third party producers. This has been probably um, a bit of a letdown. I'm a huge fan. You know, I got Baldur's Gate when it first came out. I queued up. I think it was Electronics Boutique at the time. I queued up to get this. That was before we had Amazon, man. It's before we had internet, man. Um, and and I love the game. I played it lots and lots of times. Um, so it it was it was something I I wanted to do, and I think their collector's edition let me down. Um, so for a product that I absolutely absolutely love, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't suggest buying it just buy the game you know but if you want metal dice go to d and dice you'll get better quality stuff if you want the uh the map um just get one printed it will be 15 quid at your local printers and it'd be a lot better the metal thing and a notebook get a mole skin treat yourself they're, t they're 20 quid you'll, you'll you'll save a hell of a lot of money just getting a mole skin postcards you don't need they can go in the bin um the game just buy the game was that a game exclusive the uh the shop game uh what the whole box set yeah no it wasn't game exclusive um they did various so this is where it comes down to the publishers and although these items are wizard of the coast again i love wizard of the coast i love D, &D. um you guys know that so having something that they've signed off you know why didn't they see the quality of that product before? Um, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't have, have in good conscious sell that I I, I couldn't. So mm. uh, but I already opened it and then I started playing it and yeah waste of money. But uh, I thought I could reuse it. It's nice I'll, though. It looks nice. So that is now going to come off of my bookcase and I can go back to uh, uh, go back to playing. It, but it's it's sad. It's such a great game, and to be let down in a celebration of the game, they remastered it. They were doing that. Um, yeah, that it it was is a bit hard to take from a consumer point of view. Um, you know, we didn't get that sent for free. I bought it. Um, all the items that you see on these things are, are all bought and paid for. They're not sent to us uh, for free. Um, we would say so otherwise. But um, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, a bit hard to to go by, but I'm still looking forward to playing it all over again. So is a is a question then. Um, has that soured you for buying a, a sort of a premium edition of Baldur's Gate Three when it comes out, if there is one? No, um, no, mainly because it's a different publishing company who are doing Baldur's Gate Three. Um, you'd have to look it up, Larian Studios, I think it is. Uh -huh. So uh, do check them out. They are, they, I think they did. They produced the uh, Pathfinder Divinity Original Sin Divinity, games as well. Yes. It, so it uses their engine, and there's modifications to their engine. And from uh, when they did, they, they they did the opening hour of the Indie Live in in 2020. We were in lockdown filming this. If I haven't said that already. Um, and they did a playthrough, and it was it was great. I I'm a big fan of these kind of isometric views, and what they're doing is a is a whole new level of integration, heavily layered. I think it's multiplayer as well, which I'm really looking forward to. We're going to be doing a bit as Band of Badgers, doing some live streaming, and uh, I'm also playing uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, which is very similar. I don't think Larian was involved in that; it's a different studio. But it's been really nice to go. You know, I'm getting older now. I bought Baldur's Gate when it first came out. I've got the remastered edition. And I'm looking forward to getting the kind of what is the new edition going to look like. 
This is if you was a Star Wars fan, which I am, and ignoring the prequel, when the, when the new Star Wars came out, it was like, wow, yeah, what, look what we can do with the technology we have today. And it's on that level. Um, so I'm a huge fan of Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, if you're listening, Wizard of the Coast, get in touch. Beam Dog, get in touch and prove me wrong. And Larian Studios, just shower us with goodies. Um, we would love to... Uh, I don't even know if there's a collector's edition out of Baldur's Gate 3. I haven't heard anything about it. But, Might um, not have announced it yet, potentially, but... Yeah, because I will be first in that queue. So, uh, so uh, do let us know. Uh, Icewind Dale also got the same treatment as Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, I think. Um, they oh, also released... We, we played through the, both of those, and, and I'd learnt my lesson by that point, or they'd turned Friendly Fire off, I can't remember, but there was no more Burning Hands slash uh, Delay Bars Fireball incidents. But that was definitely a standout moment in Battle's Day 2. Yeah. And, it, and but as you say, Josh, Good memories it, from those games. The, the, um, the, there's a bigger set. So it's, it comes in a similar box. You get the, all the other games as well, remastered. And I think you get... Um, what was the other one, Steve, with a floating skull? Oh, uh, Josh, if you're looking at it... Um, I'm, I'm just Googling you it get, now. You get, um, so you get Baldur's Gate, you've got Icewind Dale. It's not Eberron, it was something at Planescape. Never went to Knights. No, not Never went to Knights, Planescape. Planescape was a guy who had no memory. And every time he died, there was a floating skull that went along with him. It's not Planescape Torment, is it? Planescape Torment, that's it. Ten points. You get inspiration, Josh. Well done. <laughs> so that, that's going back before that was Gate, even, isn't it, that one? No, it came out afterwards. Did it? Yeah. They all came out afterwards. Um, Never went to I definitely, yeah. was the was the next thing. And we played that again heavily when that first came out. Because that took you out of the isometric view as such and took yeah. you into a whole new level. Um, and then after that, we went into uh, Dungeons and Dragons DDO, which was sadly quite poor. Um, and now in 2020, you've got um, what is it? Waterdeep? Um, there, there was never like winter that. nights online, weren't there, for a while? I don't know if yeah. it's still around. It's never winter. Yeah, yeah. Is it never winter at the moment? The MMO style of uh, game. Mm, but anyway, win- we digress. You see, that's what this program's about. It's been nice having you on, Josh. I think you should um, come again next week. All right. Regular, regular Badger time, regular Badger channel. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do this again. Um, but if you have uh, any comments, if you're watching this on YouTube, put your questions in the comments below. Uh, anyone, we are going to do. Um, what should we do, Steve? Should we do a giveaway now, or should we do it in YouTube? No, we can do it in YouTube. Right, so we're going to do it in YouTube. We'll we'll leave the we'll do it on this specific one, but we are going to offer a ten pound gift voucher to Ed's Gaming Emporium, and to be in with a chance to win, in the comments below, all you have to do is do uh, put this word. What is the word, Steve? It's Emporium. We've used that word again, Steve. We use a different word. We need a different word. <laughs> we, we'll use. Uh, we'll use <laughs> something that we can spell. Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah. There we I go. was going to go for nostalgia, but then I realised I can't spell nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, okay, so just put it's, it's, in the in YouTube in the comments below. Just put Baldur's Gate. You won't win this. This is mine. I paid hundred quid for it. <laughs> So unless you want to give me a hundred quid for it, in which case you can have it. Um, you will win a uh, Ed's Gaming Emporium £10 gift voucher, which you can use. He's a UK-based online shop. He's got tons of minis, board games, and pre-orders. There's tons of stuff. If you want Icewind Dale, uh, Frost Maiden, uh, you can pre-order it there. Pre-orders are £5 off, plus use our Band of Badgers discount code, and you'll get an extra 10% off, plus a tenner. You're saving your quids in. It's, it'll be really good. Right, we're going to leave it there, chaps. Any last questions from you guys? Had not from me, no. No, no, no questions from me. So it's goodbye from them, and it'll be goodbye from me as we wrap up. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.